Reading, music, appreciation and health. One clinician turned author is connecting these topics in his children's books. Published children's book author Ken Korber is joining us now in studio to chat all about it. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, guys. Grateful to be here. Thanks Thank you. We're happy yeah. to have you. you. So what was your journey like from the medical fields into becoming a children's book author? So this was a little bit of a pivot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Um, as clinicians, we're always struggling for uh, more time with our patients. So one of the things that's always challenging with pediatric patients is having to talk to the adults in the room, but then translating that to the kids if they're the, having the problems or having developmental issues. So we rely on the parents to translate the information to a three-year-old or a six-year-old or a five-year-old. What if we were able to kind of extend that office visit, which is 10 minutes, to bedtime reading stories? and have the characters in the stories give the same messages that the adults would give as an engagement tool for the, for the kids. Uh, apart from being a tool itself in, in terms of you know, education and mm. teaching and assistance, what, what possessed you to go from, from one career and then start up in an entirely different new area of, of expertise? So the patient education piece of it was sort of a driver, but my son's a musician and, oh. and a, a music education teacher so he taught me what a grace note was and then from there the idea became oh a grace note that wanted to be a bigger note oh a grace note that wanted to be a little girl so then that was a transformation story which is the winter the winter book here it was her first introduction to the readership audience cool, very cool. so who is grace yeah. and all of her friends so grace is a tween aged sassy eight-year-old kind of girl who is sort of the boss of all her friends. So we have a bunch of characters. They're all musically oriented. They play instruments. Um, we have musical vocabulary in the stories to introduce that to younger kids. Um, and then there's these insidious health messages that we sort of bring into the, into the mix as well for the stories. So that's sort of how we live. We live in Grace's world. She's my da daughter I never had. <laughs> so okay. these are all my children now. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Yeah. Way of thinking. How many, how many, uh, how many books are currently in the series? So it's winter, spring, summer, fall. Uh -huh. So that's the that's the first series, and then I do a bunch of spin-offs based on the characters from that original series. So they'll each have their own little spin-off story, and I have ten books published now. Ten, but and any more Total. in the any more in the works? Uh, always. Always in the works. <laughs> um, yeah, I tr I try to kind of keep that process going, especially more health messages because that's my my background and my. Um, my, my strength in terms of content development. So now that we have introduced Grace and her friends, now we can say, okay, let's talk about eating better, having exercise, not worrying about self-esteem. We can create little stories along those health-related public service sorts of topics. Now, Ken, you made quite a, a jump from your field into this world. And <clears throat> I'm just wondering if you have any sort of advice for aspiring writers who might be looking to do something similar. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a for, firm believer in, in supporting people that are interested in writing books. Everyone's got a story to tell, whether it's about their jobs, about their lives, about their families, and why not sit down and write a book? It's easier to perhaps to do a thousand word children's book as opposed to a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. But it's always something that you can kind of work on and then share with other people. So that, that's sort of my mantra is to kind of encourage people to do that. I do workshops to kind of help people put that together. Has anyone, anyone reached out to you that, that, that benefited from this and said you really helped out with this or that and you know my daughter or my son understood this now and, and we <clears throat> figured out a solution for an issue we didn't realize was there? Yeah, I get, I get emails all the time from my, my readership or the people that buy the books. Um, the burn prevention and fire safety in the home book um, has gotten feedback from fire safety people in the profession and say, says that it's going to change, change and, and save lives because of the fact that we're able to kind of engage the kids and sort of getting into building an escape plan, knowing what fire extinguishers are and all that sort of thing. I, I, I can see the connection now because it goes from helping one patient, now you can help multiple patients right. in one breath. Right. Or right. One, one written yes. word. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's why I encourage people to do that because cool. everybody's got a story. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining You're us welcome. this morning. Well, thank you. To purchase an autographed book, be sure to visit the website littlehealthambassadors.com.